Welcome to the celebration of Mass for the Solemnity of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ from Assumption Church in River North, Chicago. All who hunger gather gladly, holy manna is our bread. Come from wilderness and wandering, here in truth we will be fed. You that yearn for days of fullness, all around us is our food. Taste and see the grace eternal, taste and see that God is good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Today, as we gather for this feast of Corpus Christi, the most holy body and blood of Christ, as we celebrate and honor the gift, the miracle that we have every time we gather for Mass, Christ giving himself to us under the appearance of bread and wine. Let's pause now and acknowledge our sinfulness. You are the living bread that has come down from heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You remain with us always in the Eucharist we share. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. You who live and reign with God the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. 
then having sent certain young men of Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the Book of the Covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, All that the Lord has said we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with these words of his. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. To you will I offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God? For this reason, he is a mediator of a new covenant. Since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lo, the angel's food is given to the pilgrim who has driven. See the children's bread from heaven which on dogs may not be spent. Truth, the ancient types fulfilling, Isaac bound a victim willing, Paschal lamb its lifeblood spilling, manna to the Father sent. 
Very bread, good shepherd, tend us. Jesu, of your love, befriend us. You refresh us, you defend us. Your eternal goodness send us in the land of life to see. You who all things can and know, who on earth such food bestow, grant us with your saints the lowest, where your heavenly feast you show, fellow as and guest to be. Amen. Alleluia. 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 I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the, make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Folks back in ancient Israel may not have known a lot about the circulatory system or about how blood flowed through your body or about red blood cells or white blood cells, but they knew one thing, that blood carried the stuff of life and that when you lost too much blood, you died. My father told me um, when he was about six years old, um, the world was experiencing another pandemic, the great flu pandemic of 1918. And he grew very, very sick and very, very weak. And they perceived that in order to save his life, he'd need a blood transfusion. But the thing was back then, they didn't know everything about blood types. They just plump, pumped the blood from the donor to the recipient. And he says he remembers lying there on the gurney and his dad on a gurney right next to him and this little tube going from his dad over to his arm. They knew that if it was a relative that you received the blood from, it was more likely to save you than kill you. They knew that blood was the stuff of life and it saved my dad's life. 
And so for the ancient people, blood was almost a symbol of life itself. And in, in, unless we appreciate that, we're not going to understand what in the world is going on in that first reading or really understand what we do when we celebrate Mass, especially on this Feast of Corpus Christi, which focuses on the elements of the Eucharist, the body and the blood of Jesus. So here in this first reading, it takes place just as Moses has come back down the mountain from Mount Sinai, and he's there to present the law and the teachings of God to the people. And the people then affirm and accept the law as coming from God. They shout out, we will do everything that the Lord has told us to do. And then they have the sealing of the covenant between God and Israel. And that covenant is sealed in blood, the stuff of life. So by this point, they drain the blood out of these animals, and it was in these, in these bowls. Right? So the animals had no life anymore. The life source had gone out of the animal and was now in the bowls full of blood. And so Moses sprinkled half of the blood on the altar that he had built. And the altar represented God just as it continues to represent God in our churches today. And the altar that he built had 12 pillars representing the tribes of Israel. So Moses is being very explicit. When you swear to this covenant in blood, that involves every single one of you. Whatever tribe you're from, you're involved in this. Every single one of you, you're part of this. And then he says that Moses took the other half of the blood and sprinkled the blood on the people. Now, you know, here at Assumption, we rarely use the sprinkling rite, which is one of the options at the beginning of Mass of going through the church and sprinkling people with baptismal water. But whenever I do that, especially around the Easter time, there are always people when they see the water coming are like this, all right? Don't hit me with the water. Well, I wonder how people would feel if I was sprinkling blood. There'd be a lot of people doing this. That's ugh, disgusting. Hmm? But you see, what it was doing was sealing the covenant, right? That you and God now share the same blood, that the human and the divine have been joined. You share the same life. We are now one. So God's will for us is now our will for us. And the thing about the blood covenant was that once the animal was dead, you couldn't undo it, right? You couldn't put the life source back into the animal, right? So that ancient covenant that God made with Israel is still in effect because God and Israel sh still share the same life source. Even God couldn't back out on it. Hmm? So God still maintains that covenant, but God made a new covenant in Jesus which is what we celebrate when we come to Mass, or which we attend Mass virtually. And it's this covenant that we highlight on this feast of Corpus Christi, that this was a meal that Jesus celebrated during the Passover. And the Scripture says He took bread, blessed it, and passed it around, and said, this is my body. And then he took a cup of wine, and he says, this is the cup of my blood shed for the many. And he passed the cup around. Now, that was not the usual custom at a Passover meal. Normally, everyone had their own cup, and when it was time to drink the cup, everybody drank from their own cup. But you see, Jesus declared what was in his cup to be his own blood and he passed it to the apostles so that they would drink his blood. And now there was a new covenant formed in this same life source. 
He and the apostles are joined in one. They now share the same blood. They now share the same life force. They are joined to Christ, and Christ is joined to them. He became the lamb of sacrifice, and it's his own blood that restored peace between God and us. But at the same time, those who are part of the covenant were also obligated to take on the work of Christ. They would be the ones who would fulfill his mission to the world. Now, I know that's some really heavy stuff, and I hope it hasn't been too boring, you know, but usually when you talk about throwing blood around, it kind of gathers people's attention. But really to understand what we're doing when we come to Mass, and those of you who are watching when you can come back to communion, we have to understand what this covenant is about. And it's also why the Catholic Church has insisted that the bread and wine of the Eucharist is not just a symbol, a reminder, a remembrance of what Jesus did at the Last Supper, but that when we remember what Jesus did at the Last Supper, Jesus becomes present to us under the appearance of bread and wine, that we actually take Christ's bread and wine into ourselves when we receive communion, because that's the way that we actually participate in that covenant that Jesus made with the apostles at the Last Supper. We take on Christ, and the human and divine are joined when we receive communion. He becomes part of us, and we become part of Him. And we share that same life source. And when we take Christ, we take everything that Christ stands for. Just as the people of Israel said, oh, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. So it is when we take communion, we're saying, we will do everything the Lord has, has done for us. We will do everything that the Lord lived and died for. That covenant that God made at the Last Supper, it's a living thing, and it's renewed every time we come to communion. And every time we come to communion, we're renewing our commitment to live out that covenant that was made at the Last Supper. And those of us who participate in that covenant, we're bound together for eternity. Now, I think there's something significant about this new covenant that Jesus made, that it's significant that it took place at a meal. And I say that because so much of Jesus' own ministry took place at meals, often to the consternation of the self-righteous. If you read through the Gospels, um, you read how Jesus allowed this woman, who was known to be a great sinner, to approach him at table and bathe his feet with her tears. How he went to dinner with these possibly corrupt tax collector Matthew and his tax collector friends. How he made a special effort to eat at the home of Zacchaeus, the man that nobody liked and nobody approved of. He was criticized for that. He shouldn't be eating with people like this. They're sinners. And it wasn't that Jesus didn't call sinners to change, but there's a certain power of healing that takes place when we sit at the same table with people. There's a sense of mutual acceptance, a sense that we're all equals, that we break bread together. And so Jesus welcomed people at table, let them know that they were accepted and loved, and then he called them to change. So Jesus realized that eating together has the power to break down old grudges and resentments, and even cut through centuries of racial and ethnic hatred. Why so much of the civil rights movement in the 1960s took place at lunch counters and restaurants? And why whose table you were allowed to eat at in high school could brand you for life if you let it? 
So I think that Jesus saw that part of living out this covenant with us is breaking down those barriers between the people who are acceptable and unacceptable, between those who are superiors and those who are inferiors. And it's not an easy task that Jesus left to his followers. That's why I think at the Last Supper, he not only passed around bread and cup and said, do this in remembrance of me, he also washed the feet of his disciples. He took on the role of the least important person and washed the feet of his inferiors. And then he asked them to do that too in remembrance of him. So when we approach the table, whether it's the altar table or any table, we need to approach it as if we're the least important person there. And then it's not much of a stretch to eat with the people who are there. Matter of fact, if we really think of ourselves that way, we'll feel honored that they're willing to eat with us. So what we celebrate at Mass is a most amazing miracle. Jesus becomes present to us under the appearance of bread and wine. It's a tremendous privilege to participate in communion. We can never say too much about it. But one of the reasons that it's so sacred is that it's meant to be a model for every other meal, that every meal should be a place of acceptance and forgiveness and a place to remember that we were all one body, that the Eucharist is a foretaste of the banquet of heaven, where we'll all be eating at the same table, that what we hope to see in heaven we can begin to see and experience and embrace here on earth if we live out that covenant as Jesus wanted us to, if we become Christ to the world, if we become Christ's good news. And now we pray the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the Eucharist, Jesus gives himself to us as bread and wine. We lift up our voices in prayer to the one who satisfies our deepest hunger. For the church, that sharing in the Eucharist may draw us closer to Jesus and to all that he lived and died for, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those elected to public office, that they may govern with honesty, integrity, and concern for all human life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from food insecurity, that their needs may be met today and every day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian unity, that the Spirit will bring forth forgiveness for past wounds, a new spirit of trust, and opportunities to pray and work together as the body of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for healing, that God will bring an end to the coronavirus, restore the sick, break the cycle of violence in our cities, and remove the divisions in the human family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who share the Eucharist with the elderly and the homebound, that they may be blessed with patience and loving hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Provident and gracious God, please listen to our prayers. Feasting at your table, we have come to know your love. Help us to bring that love to others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all, how can I love Thee as I ought? And how revere this wondrous gift, so far surpassing hope or thought? Sweet sacrament we thee adore. Oh, make us love thee more and more. Oh, make us love thee more and more. Thy body, soul, and God had all. Mystery of love divine, I cannot compass all I have, for all thou hast and art are mine. Sweet sacrament, we thee adore. Oh, make us love thee more and more. Oh, make us love thee more and more. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice, sacrifice of your hands, hands for the, the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our, our good, good and the good of all the church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. But through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, 
you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by that same spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with our seven holy founders and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the order of bishops, the clergy, the ministers, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family you've, got, you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let's bring God's gift of peace to the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say, say the word, word and my, and my soul, soul shall be healed. We pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Draw near. Draw near, take the body of your Lord. Draw near, draw near, drink the blood for you outpoured. Draw near and take the body of the Lord and drink with faith the blood for you outpoured, saved by his body and his holy blood. With souls refreshed, we give our thanks to God. Draw near, draw near, take the body of your Lord. Draw near, draw near, drink the blood for you outpoured. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in this present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Just to call your attention to several things that are coming up towards the end of this month, our next baptism preparation session is Monday, June 21st at 7 o'clock. This session will be on Zoom. It might be our last uh, baptism program on Zoom, but this one will be on Zoom. And so if you have an infant at home uh, and you've never attended a baptism preparation session before, uh, you can register for this one at our parish office. On Wednesday, June 23rd, Father Joseph Chea will offer a presentation on anti-Asian violence that's been sweeping the country in the wake of COVID-19 and talk about the things that we as people of faith can do about it. 
And this will also be a virtual presentation, and you can find out how to register for it by going on to our website, assumption-chgo.org. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. To his feet thy tribute bring. Ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Evermore his praises sing. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise the everlasting King.